The Gospel from Matthew. Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterwards, he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, Throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again the angel took him to a very high mountain, and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you demonstrate your love for us by coming among us and taking upon yourself everything that we face in this life. We thank you for your love, for enduring the temptation, for dying for us, for rising again. We pray that you will grant us hearts that are close to you, trusting in you, holding on to you. Grant us your Holy Spirit. Amen. There's an old Scandinavian legend about Thor. Thor was a mighty, legendary figure who once visited the land of the giants. While in the land of the giants, Thor was invited to participate in the strength games of the giants. There were three events that measured strength, and Thor was eager to show his strength. And he did the best he could, but he did not do well in the games. In fact, he failed all three events. First, he was unable to drink all the water in a two-handed drinking bowl. Second, he was unable to lift a black cat And third, he was unable to wrestle an old woman to the ground. Following this humbling experience at the games of the giants, the giants explained to Thor the nature of the games. First, the two-handed bowl contained the weight of the sea. Second, the black cat was the embodiment of evil in the world. And third, the old woman represented time, all time, past, present, and future. Thor had not accounted for the deeper meaning of the games. The spiritual meaning. And so it is that we might learn with Thor, there is more to this game of life than meets the eye. We also learn from Adam and Eve, don't we? As we heard earlier when Ray read Adam and Eve, who were ready to be independent of God, eager to use their own powers and abilities. Adam and Eve were placed in the Garden of Eden, this beautiful garden, as caretakers to till the soil and care for the trees that were pleasant to the sight and good for food. And they were told they could eat of the fruit of any tree, including the tree of life, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil they were not to eat. This one limit required by God pointed to that spiritual realm where God is God and humans are created beings dependent on God for life and strength. But Adam and Eve allowed themselves to be seduced by that serpent. Notice the serpent's question. Did God say... You shall not eat from any tree in the garden. 
the question twists the spiritual reality, making it seem that any limitation of any fruit imposes some kind of phony, unnecessary restriction on their lives. Adam and Eve took the bait. They thought there was no reason why they couldn't have it all. They reached for the place of God. They ate the fruit from the tree of good and evil. And as they did so, Adam and Eve recognized their nakedness, their weakness, their failure, their shame, their mortality, their separation from God. The season of Lent is a season of spiritual awakening, and it is a countercultural season if there ever was one. Because we live in this rational, high tech, egocentric culture. If we are fortunate, though, there are events and experiences that God uses to interrupt our lives with that deeper spiritual meaning that we were created to live out. Sometimes maybe it is a recognizable spiritual hunger that gets our attention, where there is an emptiness that follows after even those great thrills of our lives, or when we have bought the latest gadget, electric gadget or sleekest car, or achieved that personal goal that we work so hard for at school or at work. We become aware that even getting what we want has left us restless for deeper meaning and deeper purpose. And I think we should consider ourselves blessed if we have that experience, if we have that hunger for God's Spirit. During Lent, we walk behind Jesus to the cross. Jesus follows this spirit way of life, entering the wilderness in this way of self-denial, keeping a 40-day fast, and when he became hungry, he refused to listen to the lie of the evil one in that first temptation that life was all about filling himself up. And he reaffirmed that as a human being, that he was a spiritual being. He depended on God for all things. He relied upon God's word. For the words from God were life. In the second temptation, the great deceiver suggests that Jesus used some manipulative power, use God to act according to a way that would prove God's presence, would prove God's promises were certain. And Jesus' response to Satan is from the word of God again, this time from Deuteronomy 6, 16. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test, the third temptation is for political power. And Jesus could make himself instantly into this irresistible leader of all. Throughout his life and ministry, however, Jesus consistently pointed to God's power. And Jesus battles temptation not with some showy power force, but Jesus battles temptation by turning to God over and over again, depending on God, meeting God, finding security in God. We too are called into the wilderness of this world, called to live in the way of Jesus. For Jesus lived out God's will completely, fully, lovingly. And so we are called to be a new creation, just like Lucas and Mason today were called into this new life, this new creation in Christ. And so we are called to live into this way and open ourselves day after day again and again to this deeper meaning, the spiritual meaning of our lives. I heard the story told recently by a friend regarding a high school classmate he had just crossed paths with, hadn't seen for 30 years. This classmate had been raised in the church, but in college he rebelled against his spiritual and religious identity, turned away from the church, 
And now after some tough experiences in his own family and marriage and children, he was back in church. And my friend said, his classmate explained it this way, I realized too late that I had absolutely no means of saying no. I knew how to go out and get everything I ever wanted, but I had no means of knowing what was worth wanting. What is worth wanting for you? St. Augustine once said that God is always trying to give us good things, but our hands are too full to receive them. Are there things we need to empty out of our hands? We need to say no to that there might be room for God in our lives? Room for the spirit life to grow? That deeper meaning? Are there limits in your own life the Holy Spirit is calling you to that the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is not for you? Marjorie Thompson in her book, Soul Feast, suggests that people today need limits because we have come to relate food and drink, sex and money, recognition and cars, clothing and computers, media and cell phones, fads and gaming. We have come to relate all these not as lovely gifts to be enjoyed in moderation and gratitude, but as objects to consume, to fill up the emotional voids in our lives. And when what we consume is consuming us, and what we possess is possessing us, the only way back to health and balance is to refrain from using those things. To give up anything that comes between ourselves and God. To fast. What forms of fasting is God calling you to in your wilderness today? Where might the Spirit be leading you to do some fasting? Fasting from constant social media, texting, surfing, Snapchatting, fasting from needless shopping, consuming, buying credit card debt, fasting from mood-altering substances, drinking, using, fasting from compulsive over-scheduling, over-activity, busyness. How is the Spirit calling? On this first Sunday in Lent, it is appropriate we think about that. What is it I am doing to excess? And whenever we are doing something to excess, we are always avoiding what is the true center and true meaning of our lives. The deeper meaning. Spiritual life and health. What are the areas of life that need freeing of the Lord Jesus? And as you are in the wilderness in your own life, remember that Jesus is with you always. Jesus is faithful and reliable. Jesus is with you now. For Jesus is the living word. Amen.